everybody, I'm Dr. Tukas Banusenova and I welcome you again on my channel iDrTutsi. Today I would like to share with you with the main tips for young ophthalmologists who start their fellowship abroad. So uh, this article I wrote uh, and shared in the, my LinkedIn profile and you can find the link below. And the thing is that uh, this article is written based on my own uh, experience of uh, having my fellowships abroad and I hope this will be helpful for you too. Tip number one, be ready for the country you move. It's, well, it's always better to prepare yourself mentally for the country you move, especially if the country differs uh, from, uh, culturally from your own country. For example, when I was moving to Japan for my second fellowship, uh, my cousin advised me that, you know, it will be good if you read something about Japan, if you maybe read a little bit about alphabet and just uh, people, their attitude. And I was like, no, I don't need that. I will get used to and I want to start uh, adapting once I'm there. So it was wrong because um, not knowing them from the beginning lead me to some misinterpretation of their attitude. They are very closed people, for example, and they're not easy in starting talking to you. So I always uh, was thinking that I'm just not welcome for these people. And of course, it was just a sad moment for me. But later I understood that this is just a culture and uh, I was not, let's say like that, offended <laughs> anymore. Um, but uh, in the fellowship in Turkey, for example, I didn't have any problems because culturally from my own country, we don't have that much difference. So there, I didn't have this cultural shock when I was there. But that's why I'm telling you, once you move to a country which is especially different culturally, it's better to read about this country, about the culture, about traditions, about people before you move there. Tip number two, be ready for a new person syndrome. I believe it's a very common rule that when you are new somewhere, kindergarten, school, class, work, and etc. you are going to be a new person who will gain more attention than anybody at work. And of course, judgment and sometimes even a critical approach towards uh, yourself also you could feel uh, from your surrounding, from your colleagues and um, everyone at your workplace. So don't let this to demotivate you. Set yourself time uh, and just be relaxed, be yourself uh, and don't worry about that because this is just a starting point of you being in you somewhere. Some people may like you and some people may not. Uh, don't let this to make you feel down or demotivate you. Don't feel yourself, oh, I don't like this job. I don't want to go there anymore. Just give yourself some time and over time it's gonna be better. This was the second tip. <music> tip number three, be humble. Given that the new person syndrome, as I said already, uh, since you're a new person, you're gonna be judged uh, stricter than others at workplace and any wrong uh, behavior or attitude from your side can be misinterpreted. That's why it's always better to be just quiet, humble. Uh, for example, I can just make some example when I was um, in my fellowship in Turkey, I was starting my Strabismus fellowship and there uh, my supervisor presented me to a resident there as someone who doesn't know anything about strabismus. Uh, she said that she is just totally zero in strabismus. Uh, I was not really zero about strabismus. Of course, I knew much uh, better at the end of my fellowship than I knew before, but uh, I couldn't consider myself totally zero, but I didn't say anything. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm a zero <laughs> uh, in strabismus. So, and this resident just, accepted that and since I didn't say anything, um, this was uh, 
accepted very nice, you know, because they didn't see me as someone who is uh, trying to compete with them or show them how great I am. Uh, because I was there already after the residency, but they were residents uh, in their strobismus rotation. So that's why I kept myself quiet and it's always better to act like that because during the practice or during the daily working you still come of um, you still face with the conditions where there may be of course very a lot of cases when you don't know many things and you may just stay and when someone or supervisor asking you something you may say that I don't know and that's why it's better to be humble uh, don't try to put yourself too much on the top because sometimes it's not really welcomed from your colleagues uh, and co-workers at the period of adaptations once you are new somewhere. Tip number four, work hard. Only by working hard you will, you will be able to adapt to a new place faster, to get into the routine work of the new place and uh, to understand better this, uh, how systematically it works. And while you start working uh, hard, it will show only your motivation and your activity and your ability of doing um, your daily work and at the same time of course once you show how humble you are which was the third tip um, they will th this will let to understand others how actually uh, active and uh, let's say like that um, and uh, skilled you are or, and motivated you are because once you show all this characteristic of yourself this will only uh, you will get only respect from others and gradually went out of this new person syndrome area <laughs> number five try to interact when you move to another country especially somewhere with an absolutely different culture and you're working with your colleagues uh, from different culture, try sometimes in your break time, interact with them, talk to them about random things, I don't know, about the weather or something else. Me, personally, I'm not really open person at a workplace. I'm, I can be very open and uh, communicative once I'm out of my work area, but at the beginning of the of my work somewhere in a new place, I, I'm a bit closed. Um, it's not like I don't want to interact with people, but I just need some time when I start to interact with them. Like, I don't know, sometimes it may, lead, it may be one, two, three months. Um, I will say again uh, an example from my fellowship in Japan, uh, because I had my cultural shock already from the first months of being there and I was working only with Japanese people. So I was, let's say, the only foreigner there. And of course, I was just a bit careful because I understood that uh, here people, they have different traditions, uh, different uh, attitude, and I didn't want to be misunderstood from anybody. And I was too close. So I was going to work, I was doing my work, um, I was uh, listening very carefully when someone was explaining me things which I had to do, for example. Uh, but it was just a daily thing. I'm just going, working, leaving, going, working, leaving. But then they were very nice and they started to talk to me. And um, I appreciate this very much because I don't know how long it would take me uh, not interacting with them. So once they start to talk to me, they, they just broke uh, this border uh, of me being so hesitative and not talking to them. And after that, they were like, oh, you seem so closed and uh, serious, but you're funny because you make some interesting jokes. <laughs> and yeah, and this was uh, the main thing. And I have 
uh, I would like to advise you that don't worry and try to interact with people, try to ask them. Uh, they will be really happy to help you if you start asking them, oh, do you know any place where I could go, for example, in the city or uh, just try to talk to them. Most of the people, once uh, you start approaching them very nice uh, in a new place at work, they, most of them are nice. I believe so. <laughs> Tip number six, don't overwork. Try to distract yourself after work with your favorite activities because working hard is good, but not overworking yourself is the, also the main thing because when someone overworks himself, it brings uh, us to some kind of uh, condition when we are just exhausted and it may lead uh, to demotivation and it, it will decrease our uh, ability of uh, doing something and activity. So try to distract yourself. When you have your day off, for example, if you like sightseeing, explore the city, new city where you live. Um, if you like to train or do sports, uh, try to find gym, for example, in the neighborhood close to your house or close to your work, doesn't matter. Dance, if you like dancing, try to find dancing lessons and attend them. So you definitely have to do something which will let you switch your brain off uh, uh, from the work and uh, which will bring you just the relaxation because after that when you start your new day and work it will make you even feel more motivated and more active and more productive at your workplace <music> tip number seven socialize and find friends the best way for me uh, of finding the friends once you're and in general actually the best way of finding friends um, in every country is through internations. It's, uh, I have no um, interest of uh, talking about this website, but I'm just advising you because internations.org is a great website because once you have account there, uh, in every country, you may participate in different kind of events. And in these events, a lot of international people um, attend and uh, there you can make first of all a good contacts if you want to socialize um, and get just uh, as, uh, get to know as much people as you want in order to increase your uh, I don't know how to say that <laughs> increase the number of people you know or if you just want to make good friends because many people from different um, spe of different specialties I, I don't know um, and, and people from embassy or businessmen or whoever works in this country uh, attending these uh, events most of the time. So this is the uh, great step of trying to find friends if you don't have any other environment of uh, trying of finding friends. So this is the best thing and uh, socializing and uh, finding friends is also important thing when you're in some another country when you don't know anybody, when you don't have your family. So that's why interacting with people is very important in order not to feel yourself lonely and down. So these were the main seven tips uh, for young ophthalmologists who is going to start their fellowship abroad. Uh, I believe this is very helpful and this is the main tips. I wish I would know these tips when I was uh, starting my own fellowship abroad. Hope you find this uh, presentation informative for you and I'm wishing you a good day. Bye.